Mom, can you come pick me up? The E-Girls and the Visco Girls started a war in the cafeteria. The classic high school movie hierarchy of jocks, cheerleaders, and nerds that dominated our collective consciousness for decades is officially dated. Instead, the new high school cafeteria is populated by e-girls, soft girls and boys, gym bros, and visco girls. E-girls. Soft girls. Visco girls. Today's social media platforms like TikTok make it easier for young people to find communities of compatible peers as well as bigger issues to engage with, thus breaking down the rigid social boundaries that once separated the so-called cool kids from the unpopular. Yes, I'm a girl gamer, playing games is what I do. These new TikTok-inspired tropes integrate memes and social media aesthetics with film and TV influences, while reflecting real-life trends and personalities. Here's our take on how we define the teen tropes of today and what they mean for the future. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Wondershare Filmora 10, an intuitive, fast, and affordable video editor for creators of all skill levels. Since you're a fan of this channel, you may be interested in creating videos of your own. If so, I strongly recommend you try Filmora 10. It's super user-friendly, and they have helpful tutorials to help you get started. With its preset templates for effects, filters, and royalty-free music, you can make a polished video in as little as 10 minutes. Plus, their team is always rolling out cool new features that will give your video that extra oomph, like the AI portrait mode add-on that can remove video backgrounds easily without using a green screen. They also have an auto-reframe tool, so it only takes a few clicks to get your video ready for social media. As a special treat for our viewers, comment below with your Filmora video creation using the hashtag CreateWithFilmora and tag this is the take on Twitter, and the Filmora team will pick one lucky winner to receive a one-year free license. Click the link in the description below to try Filmora 10 for free. Again. What do you got? The leather jacket, rock and roll, I hate my parents era of the 50s declared the arrival of teens in cinema. In movies like Rebel Without a Cause, teens were painted as balls of angst. I'll never get close to anybody. Primarily defined in contrast to their mom and dad troubled youths who succumb to their vices before ultimately straightening out just like their parents. Whatever comes, we'll, we'll face it together. I swear it. But already in Rebel Without a Cause, we can see the mean, cool kids clashing with the rebellious outcast. I'm sorry that I treated you mean today. You shouldn't believe what I say when I'm with the rest of the kids. As the teen movie evolved with the decades, it became less interested in parents and intensified its focus on the dynamics of high school cliques and in-crowds. The 80s flourishing of the teen movie genre thanks to John Hughes' movies like The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Pretty in Pink ultimately became the blueprint for future portrayals of high schoolers. You see us as you want to see us. The brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. You have the hierarchy with the jocks and cheerleaders at the top, the nerds and weirdos at the bottom, and the rebels as outliers outside of the system. The popular kids were rich, empty, and cruel. Where'd you get your clothes? Five and dime store? While the dorks were original, sensitive, and sweet, making up for their lack of social cachet with creativity and integrity. And what did that cost you? Oh, about $15 for the shoes, secondhand, and I made the rest. These archetypal notions of high school were so embedded in our culture that by the late 90s and early 2000s, teen movies became formulaic and self-referential to a degree that risked killing off the genre. Well, I'm the reformed cool guy who's learned the error of his ways. She's gonna forgive me for my mistakes and realize that I really love her. Then in 2004, Mean Girls unpacked just how elaborate high school cliques had actually become. Asian nerds, cool Asians, varsity jocks, unfriendly black hotties. While deconstructing the cruelty-fueled power structure of old school popularity. That is the thing with you plastics. You think that every Everybody is in love with you when actually everybody hates you. Looking back, almost all teen movies underlined variations on similar messages. Exclusionary popularity doesn't make you happy. This system actually makes everyone miserable, including those at the top. Your daydreams are a lot better than my realities, believe me. And it's more important to find your individual passion and true friends. Calling somebody else fat won't make you any skinnier. 
Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. But over the last 15 years or so, movies, shows, and social media finally seem to be more effectively destroying that traditional hierarchy, whether through explicitly critiquing its myths. But the irresponsible people who partied also got into those colleges. They did both. Complicating its classic tropes or leaving it behind altogether. TikTok is full of teenagers who unapologetically meme everyone, including themselves, and collectively they've created an informal set of guidelines for what teen tropes look like today. So let's take a look at the character types that populate this new crowd, and note that while some may sound gender specific, in practice they're actually expressed across the gender spectrum and open to all who identify. The rebel with a cause. Oh, he just threw tear gas into the crowd, yo! Pick it up with your bare hands and throw it back. The rebel is a staple of the teen genre, going back to the earliest movies. The classic model of this character is a lone wolf determined to stick it to the man, or wallowing in anger and despair at the emptiness and corruption of society. There is no gas shortage, man. It's all fake. The oil companies control everything. But with our digital age contributing to Gen Z's striking political awareness, today's rebel with a cause is a relatable main character, showing that it's now pretty mainstream to voice tough questions about the direction our society and planet are going in. I hate that we are shoved aside, that we are dismissed, ranked, assaulted. Meanwhile, the new alternative it girl is the e-girl. I blacked out. When I woke up, I looked like strawberry shortcake. I looked to my left to see a note. Your page is dying. We did what we had to do. XOXO the e-girls. Where goth meets kawaii and TikTok meets Twitch. All I do is play Animal Crossing and cry. She's an update to cinema's older versions of the edgy weird girl with a dash of the manic pixie dream girl's eccentric style and the cool girl's traditionally masculine hobbies that society will have you believe aren't meant for girls. To spot her in the cafeteria, look for someone breaking the dress code, lecturing men on the patriarchy. It's degrading, it's discriminatory, and it just goes to show how insidious and systemic body terrorism truly is in this country. And perhaps hanging out with her polar opposite, the soft girl. I write a letter when I have a crush so intense that I don't know what else to do. While the e-girl claims conventionally male spaces, the soft girl began as an internet aesthetic that embraces hyper-femininity, composed of pastels, rosy makeup, and perfectly cute clothing. On-screen iterations of the soft girl often build on the girly girl and girl next door tropes. And although it's easy to mistake a soft girl for meek, she has hidden strength as well as emotional intelligence and empathy. But the best part is spending time with my sisters. The soft girl reflects a larger trend in today's online spaces of pushing back against hating on girls who present as feminine. I like pink. Pink. And recognizing that it's sexist to denigrate pink, princesses, or anything unapologetically girly. There's also the soft boy, who's in touch with his feminine side and channels his sensitivity into his interests, hobbies, and attitude toward women. I have this thing where I like to hear the words of powerful women before I party to remind myself of the respect and awe you ladies deserve. But there's also a less genuine version of the soft boy who veers into pretentiousness and a pursuit of sex disguised as getting to know the real you. My parents live in Hoxton, but I live in the moment. This faux soft boy starts to overlap with the f boy. Constantly lurking in your DMs, the f boy takes pride in how many people he slept with this week and couldn't care less about emotional attachment. You want my advice? You f her like the horse she is. Kick her ass to the curb. His characteristics have arguably always been present in cinema with tropes like the mean popular guy. Virgin alert, favorite. Looking good, ladies. But we see a shift in perspective with collective opinion villainizing and sidelining the f boy instead of making them main characters that girls fall in love with. The popular jock of years gone by is perhaps best kept alive in the gym bro. The pinnacle of Snapchat culture, the gym bro term was coined to define athletic guys flexing their muscles on their social media stories with the caption, the hustle never stops. His alarm said rise and grind. Must he forget? Who still says that unironically? In film and TV, today's gym bro has more depth than the old school popular jock as he's portrayed as having an actual heart behind those pecs. Come on, he's an idiot jock. He's what? not an idiot. He's trying something new that he might not be very good at, which is brave. While young athletes have always been under pressure... Andrew! 
You've got to be number one. I won't tolerate any losers in this family. Today's portrayals draw that out even more. I just need it to stop, like. <sighs> what to stop? This f***ing pressure. And show how dedication to athletics can be mirrored by a personality that's similarly effortful about being a thoughtful friend or boyfriend. It's actually really nice having someone to talk to about this stuff. You're a good listener. The popular mean girl of teen movies gone by is also on the decline, but we have the visco girl who still embodies the mainstreamness, privilege, and conspicuous consumption of the earlier trendy popular girl. Oh, these? These are just my scrunchies. I know she won't have one. Really? You keep that. Don't even worry about it. Painted as the epitome of basic and hyper fixated on what's trending, the visco girl is into popular fashions like scrunchies, shell necklaces, and lip gloss and even boasts a hydro flask as part of her look in her bid to save the turtles. Hey. This? This is my hydro flask. You don't have one? Then how do you make your friendship reflect? But whereas the popularity-obsessed Queen Bee of the past ruled her school and kept others down, the Visco girl has a lot less social dominance. She's typically dismissed as a little annoying in an era where being too trendy or mainstream isn't as cool as it once was. Which brings us to the new nerds. As a scientist, Fabiola was used to a clear-cut, data-driven life. Hello, Fabiola. And hello to you, Gears Brosnan. The teen tropes of the past depicted nerds and geeks at the bottom rung of the social hierarchy. I think I'm joining the mathletes. No. No, no. no, no. You cannot do that. That is social suicide. But in today's TikTok ecosystem, where definitions of coolness are a lot more open-ended and even the most niche interests can be shared in online communities, the nerd no longer has to feel ashamed. Let's look at a few subtypes of today's proud nerds. There's the academic, who can be either dark or light. The torch holders of light or dark academia are romantic about the entire culture of knowledge. The main premise that knowledge and the pursuit of knowledge is a gift, it's something desperately beautiful and exciting and wonderful, and um, I just love that there's a place on the internet for that. We also have the theater kit. Mark thy calendars and make thy plans to attend the drama department's summer program, Shakespeare in the Park. King Lot. The theater kit has always been around in their distinct high school ecosystem, but TikToks now memed the theater kit into a ubiquitous, universally recognizable presence. <laughs> The same goes for the fangirl. Prior to the internet, fans on screen were painted as creepy, dangerous, obsessives, or silly, mindless teen girls. But as we've increasingly learned to respect the fan, she's now someone who has power, either as part of an army of fans advocating for what they care about, or as an individual who takes inspiration from the culture she loves. The Chronicles of Glenoxy is an epic alien love comic book series that will be made into a global movie franchise and eventually be screened in space. Being a fangirl or fanboy can help you find communities or yourself. If you liked Harry Styles growing up, you're probably bisexual now. If you liked Niall, you're attracted to Ellen DeGeneres and the guy from the Lucky Charms commercial. Whether you're sharing your fan fiction or sporting Euphoria girl looks. In this video, I'm going to be recreating four Euphoria looks. There's also the gamer. Once a signifier of the classic geek, you can't get 750,000 points on Dig Dug. Being obsessed with games, especially video games, has now been cool for decades. Yet the gamer has more power and cachet than ever today. In an economy where getting good at this field can lead to a career with serious income. When carefully examining these tropes past and present, we notice the changing high school environment. While older films focused on parents, principals, and popular kids as sources of conflict, How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? The new teen genre is confronting bigger, collective, sometimes abstract issues. Climate change, the billionaire class, corrupt politicians, school shootings, homophobia, and rigid gender norms. No room for heteronormativity in here. Okay, let's make a few people straight, and now let's dump that out, yes, and make everyone else gay. Instead of rebelling against their dad, they're attacking the patriarchy at large. You're able to have so much compassion for all these groups of oppressed peoples you don't even know, and yet not for your family. Your generation's only sacred value 
biting the hand that feeds you. The pursuit of a better world is their cause, and high school is just a fragment of that story. Amy's spending the summer in Botswana helping women make their own tampons. At the same time, the strict lines between popularity and loserdom are blurring. New movies and shows like Booksmart, Sex Education, and Euphoria portray this array of different teen types intermingling and individuals being part of multiple friend groups. A radical departure from the past rules forbidding popular kids and geeks from even speaking to one another. Please, sit here, let's go! I've been f***ing waiting for this since like seventh grade! <laughs> now, a significant number of videos about the e-girl portray her with the soft girl as if the two opposite types are besties. Polar opposite friends check! Another key reason those boundaries have broken down is that the traditional physical space of the high school is different, now that the digital world is woven into real-life interactions. You'll cancel him, dox him, sick the K-pop fans on him. When you can find people online that are just like you, the approval of that one queen bee or prom king is a lot less crucial, because there are a lot more places you can potentially get validation or likes. Kat had amassed over 53,000 followers. She had become extremely popular online. Whether we like it or not, the internet has considerably impacted how we view and define who we are. Gen Z is the first generation that doesn't know a pre-digital life, and their social media presence is a testament to how much the online and real worlds are melding. I found the e-boy at school. They actually exist. There he is. It's actually the first time where teens themselves are defining how they're seen on screen. Previous generations have always got to shape the stories about what the next generation's high school hierarchy looks like, as older screenwriters, directors, and producers typically create teen movies for each era's actual youths. But with Gen Z memeing themselves and taking over TikTok, we see movies and shows following their lead and adapting to this portrait of teen world that's evolving through shifting trends before our eyes. I know your generation relied on flowers and father's permission, but it's 2019. And unless you're Amish, nudes are the currency of love. On the other hand, this memification of identity risks encouraging a shallow sense of self built around fleeting fads. As the godfather of, of, of indie cinema, Quentin Tarantino likes to say, Please, God, no more Quentin Tarantino references. The most important aspect of these modern tropes is their fluidity and how they challenge the barriers of the past. Adhering too rigidly to any trend and making it the main part of your identity will just lead to updated versions of the same old cliques. On screen, high school has always symbolized what's changing in the next generation, whether that's the rebel trope being tied to the hippies and civil rights movement, or the 90s girly girl to the peak of MTV. The halls are with the bare midriff. Oh, and my black hip huggers. It'd be so oops, I did it again. Teen tropes are always reflective of larger societal forces. Today, social media has given more visibility to marginalized groups, which has led to more acceptance. Information about major world problems now meets teens where they are. Her company is a part of the unraveling of the social fabric. Should I be rooting for that just because it's run by a woman? Sometimes overwhelming and daunting young people, but also potentially galvanizing them to support, get involved in, and even spearhead social movements. So why are they banning the app? because Gen Z is using TikTok as a platform to organize the masses and prank Donald Trump. As Gen Z prepares to come into power in the future, their more holistic worldview has potential to make the positive changes we need to see in our world. We are not one-dimensional. We are smart and fun. So when I think about the teen movie, I of course think about how much I love it. It's just been a big part of my growth and formation. But I also think about why should I care? As you say, I, it's something that you model as a young person. And when I look back at the teen movies, when I was coming of age, we've done a video on this too. And we did a video on the late 90s and early 2000s teen movies. Yeah. How aware they were of, of all of these tropes, but they were still taking them for granted and reinforcing that these were the characters in the high school cafeteria. And I think we took them for granted. When I look at my high school, you had this hierarchy, you had the cool kids, you had the nerds. The coolness is based on these values of athletics, being pretty and um, rich. And when you look at it, you're like, did these types exist before the movies or did the movies create them and then reinforce them? I think they, I think they did exist. You know, I think that 
a lot of times writers, especially who were writing on the shows and the movies, did draw on their own high school experiences. They did, but then it's from, it's the previous generation. You don't have teens right? writing the movies, you have adults writing about their teen experience and shaping the next teen experience. The movies have always grappled with that, right? I mean, it's sort of the idea of how you relate to the generation your parents before you. And I always think of Rebel Without a Cause as such a perfect example of that, which we discussed in our video. This strong motivation to not become your parents, which ironically, and it's in the movie, you know, you really see it play out, in many ways you do uh, become your parents because of exactly, Susanna, what you're saying, right? Is that who's showing us what the models are? One example that I've always loved is Heathers from 1989, okay. and it captures how yeah. these, uh, these teen structures and the popular kids are preparing young people for an adult world and a certain idea of the adult world that is fueled by meanness and empty values and that quote where she says that she and her other popular girls Girls are like co-workers it's just like there are people I work with and our job is being popular and shit and it's really striking that all these movies are like you should own being different it's great to be different but it never seems like that message got through and I never felt like the people around me had internalized that message that you shouldn't chase after popularity but it did give rise to other tropes right and you think about like revenge of the nerds and those types of movies that sort of chose a whole new genre right of to grapple with that and so it's mm -hmm. exciting to see that there's more models put out there and you know I, I remember 21 Jump Street was a, the remake it was a definitely a formative moment for me because it kind of flipped or inverted the standard teen trope on its head Head, uh, where Jonah Hill became the cool kid, you know, because he cared about the environment and he was thoughtful and he did well in school. And that's really so cool to have that as an example. And maybe for the first time, teens are getting to write these roles a little bit more because TikTok and other social media is playing into the narrative. And then you have film and TV actually listening to that and incorporating that more and more into their portrayal. So no longer is it just the the adults speaking about their past experience and assuming that the teens will be a variation on that. You have more of the teens participating in the conversation and there are different ideas of, of what can be a marker of popularity and it doesn't just have to be based on meanness and money. It's do you care about the environment? It's, uh, do you have an original style? You know, as we saw growing up, these have a real effect. I mean, there's not just three now buckets, right? We have different characters and different ways that we can approach the experience of teenage life. And it's less of an up and down hierarchy too. It's not about saying you can't talk to each other if you're not the same type or the same crowd. That's like finally at last, it's taken decades, but we're finally getting a little bit past that cliched idea of what popularity is and should be. And I think of Mean Girls and, you know, the, the end and the conclusion is... Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. It's that idea of exclusive <laughs> idea of popularity, that, that making other people feel worse makes you feel better. That doesn't work. It's not worked for decades. It doesn't set you up for success in life, too. As you learn more about yourself or you learn more about others, those roles may change and morph. And there are more important things to care about. I think I think young people today are thinking, hey, let's save our planet from overheating. Let's fix some really, really glaring issues right. in our society. And yep. do we need to fixate on something so superficial? Or maybe we got there, we got here because of what we saw. Things that we watched as teens shaped us and how we view the adult world, the things that teens are putting out there and how they're writing their narrative is gonna shape the fabric of adult society in the next decade, so it matters. It matters, it matters.